Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have a specific situation. A client gave us a call over the weekend saying that their pump was no longer running. And this is a pump that's probably only been used for about two years or so. I'm gonna show you guys a real quick trick on getting the pump to fire up. This is on a Jandy, on most Jandy pumps. I've done this before in the past. And what seems to happen is, um, you know, they turned it off and I think it's probably the capacitor lost a little bit of its power. So I'm gonna show you how to basically do a kickstart on a Jandy. Here we have a Jandy plus HP 1.5 pump. Okay, and as we turn it on, you hear that going on, right? So what I'm gonna tell you to do is something very quick that I've done this in the past many times and it's kickstarted the motor and also too by the pump running, it sends more juice and re-energizes the capacitor. So basically what's happened is the client shut down this pump because they were having some type of issue. I don't know what happened, but the capacitor probably is uh, either losing its power, possibly needs to be replaced. Uh, like again, like I said, I've done this before. This is gonna, once the pump starts to run, the motor starts to run, it's gonna re-energize that um, capacitor so that it's gonna basically keep uh, the motor going for you. So first thing you wanna do is Right here in the front, the great thing with these with these pumps is they have a cap that covers the motor shaft, right? So all you do is basically turn that, and then by turning this, you're turning the shaft of the motor, okay? And then you're gonna wanna do that when the pump is on, and you'll see what I'm showing you. So you can tell it moves freely. And there you go. By turning that really quick, gets that motor running all over again. You get a little quick jump start. We'll go ahead and we'll put our, our cap back in place, right here down. Check it out. We're gonna do that again, okay? And what I tell the clients to do is we're just gonna let it run because it's only been running for less than a minute. Okay, we're gonna basically show you again. Again, okay, set of pliers. have this then that's not good you got to do it quicker i got this bag in the way so i'm giving you the angle that i need we'll shut it down we're going to give it a minute for this to kind of calm down a little bit and we'll be right back i think what ends up happening specifically with the the jandy um the MX-8 or these uh, these style vacuum cleaners, the water levels in the pools have been low. A uh, client, I could tell that they've have filled it up. So a lot of times when the water level gets low, either the skimmer's on and that sucks air into the system or these clay, uh, cleaners, they climb the wall very high and it induces a lot of air into the system, causing the pump to continue to cavitate. That's potentially what happened with this pump. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean 
up the swimming pool. That's gonna give us our time needed for that pump to go ahead and uh, you know, just kind of cool down, reset itself. And then when we go back over there, we're gonna turn it on and spin the, um, we're gonna spin the shaft of the motor. We're just gonna let it run. And we're gonna monitor and have our client let us know how it's working uh, if we need to. Um, we can find the capacitor for it. We'll go ahead and we'll replace the capacitor on that motor. So here we go.
those see. First, let me check out the skim. So we're back here and we get set up. If you do want to do this rather quickly, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up myself in the angle for me to spin this. For me to spin this shaft. And when I come, I'm just gonna grab and spin. to run continuously through its hours uh, through its normal scheduled hours reset the clock if your client has turned off uh, the power to the pump that's what they did here so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna reset my clock for the hours of the operation that it is and now it's around 11 o'clock which is gonna give me plenty of hours okay so we're gonna leave it running and by leaving it running, your pump is gonna re-energize. I am actually working. The pump is gonna re-energize and re-power up that capacitor and giving it a more juice for it to store that power inside of the capacitor. So that's more likely what I suspect that happened here. Pump lost prime. And when a pump loses the prime and the motor is still running, the components on the inside of the motor overheats and that capacitor um, is overworking itself and getting overheated and with heat there's always loss of energy so that's what I think happened here um, the motor's been off for about over the weekend so about two three days we're gonna go ahead and let this off just let it keep running and then have the client call you back you know next door next day and make sure that the, the pump did turn on if it didn't turn on on its own and more likely it's just gonna be looking at a swap out of a capacitor but i've done this in the past and i've never had a call back i've never had a replace capacitor yet so thank you so much for watching this video hopefully you learned a little bit on how to jump start your jandy uh, your jandy pumps this can go for your flow pros your plus asps your e pumps your self pumps um, or any pump probably that has the shaft exposed it's very simple uh, to kickstart it you can also try to do this on other standard motors where the shaft is on the inside you'll have to try it out be a little bit more careful because there's more components around the actual shaft but go ahead and give it a try and thank you so much for watching the video don't forget to like and subscribe to my page we have uh just we're just shy of about a hundred or so uh, subscribers for us to hit our goal of a thousand so come on guys help us out here um thank you so much till the next time my people I show you the good but I also still want to show you the bad and remember when I said I never had a call back about the jump starting well, yeah she called me and actually she texted me the client and uh, the pump stopped working again so in this specific situation I think there's more going on with the actual motor than probably just the capacitor reason being uh, all the other clients that I've done this on, they have never told me that the pump is overheated. Uh, they just basically told me the motor stopped working um, and they heard that grunting noise as we showed you in the beginning of the, of the, uh, the video. With this specific situation, um, the motor was overheating. So possibly there's something else is going on within the, within the motor. There is uh, a thermal uh, protection on the motor that stops it 
so probably there's more damage that's uh, occurred with this motor than originally thought you know that's why I, when the client told us that uh, this has happened we told them uh, to shut down the motor to have it uh, cool down she left it off for the whole entire weekend a lot of times that can uh, and will help the situation uh, with overheating but in more severe cases um, there's more going on with the motor itself so we're on our way back we're going to be actually uh, testing uh, the microfarads on the capacitor and uh, seeing if that is uh, ultimately our cause or if it's something else going on with the motor so we're on our way back and we're gonna I'm gonna show you everything because I don't only show you the good or I never show you the the bad things or the very rare times that we do have little callbacks it's not really a callback you know what I did for the client was something that can be done right on hand as you can see it's something very quickly so we're gonna go back and I'm gonna show you together let's go all right guys uh, we're back here again and I can you guys can't feel it but I'm gonna tell you this motor is extremely hot I'm talking about extremely hot so um, it's uh, the motor definitely is gonna need to be whew, that is so hot this motor is gonna have to be replaced um, so is gonna have to be replaced so sometimes you can win sometimes you can lose but uh, you know nevertheless it is what it is my tip and trick on doing that is everything that I say is always fine lines with possibilities that it can and cannot happen or can it cannot work for you but nevertheless I have gained a lot of positive um, success with uh, spinning the motor shaft and the motor is good but in this specific case it's not did not work out to our benefit but you know if you're having an overheating issue and anything potentially caused it to uh, to uh, overheat then you know we're going to be looking at a motor replacement uh, for this pump so that's what it is this motor was manufactured in 2017 it's well outside of the the range of warranty and it's very unfortunate I thought we can save our clients some money and that's the whole basis of this video is trying to do right by the client with these pro tips if you find success with it then that's great and I found many success with it but like everything like Murphy's Law, if anything can fail, it will fail. So in this case, we came out on the losing end, but uh, you know, we'll do another video. We'll do a, a, a motor replacement on this and uh, get, the, get the client back up and running again. Again, man, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I show you the good and I show you the bad. You can see that it does start up. So it is still a good tip, but the percentages of it working that's up to the pump, the condition, and how everything was being managed and maintained throughout uh, the time and if the water level was too low and all those different factors. So, you know, factors involved, no need to explain myself anymore. It does happen. So thank you again for watching this video. Like and subscribe. Let's get this, my client back up and running again. You do the same. Peace out. All right, to check your capacitor, uh, there's two screws on either side. You remove those two screws and you're gonna expose the capacitor. Now in our case, our capacitor was extremely hot. Um, so first, before you even check in your capacitor, you're gonna, obviously gonna need to have a digital multimeter. That it has the potential of checking microfarads, okay? Uh, which typically, uh, you put it in this selection here for your microfarads. 
Okay, but very careful with uh, capacitors, as you can tell. I'm gonna try to flip this around. Um, by looking at this capacitor here, you can tell that we should have 30 microfarads, okay? And this has a storage of up to 440 volts AC. So this capacitor um, is a very high powered capacitor for this type of motor, okay? So before even checking capacitors, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to discharge the capacitor itself from all the voltages in there. So you wanna first make sure before you even touch any of this stuff that you remove all the power completely uh, and there's no power present inside of the motor. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to discharge the capacitor of the voltage. Okay, and by doing that, you need to use a high resistance capacitor, I mean, uh, resistor, or simply by taking uh, any screwdriver and cross uh, contacting over the terminals um, like this, and then you completely discharge uh, the capacitor. Now to fully check the capacitor, you gotta remove from the leads and then you go ahead and uh, test the terminals on either side and you should be getting somewhere close to the uh, capacitor uh, microfarads and you can tell in here that it's plus or minus 8% uh, or I'm sorry 6% of that um, of that actual capacitor there. Uh, we went ahead and we checked it and we're getting zero uh, completely zero uh, on the capacitor there. So this capacitor is completely screwed. Um, so uh, we've already checked it out. Again, take off the two leads and then pull it down. Ours is extremely high. We can also notice that it's kind of bulgy up here on the top. Um, and so this motor in totality is completely messed up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back again and uh, inform our client that she's gonna be needing to have a motor replacement done. All right, everybody, I wanna go into a little bit of things to check for when your pool pump motor is overheating or when you're having capacitor issues with your actual motor. Uh, first, we're gonna start off with pool pump motor overheating and typical things to check for and causes of motor overheating. Number one biggest thing is uh, loss of prime or low water levels. That is going to be very key for uh, pool pump motors overheating due to the fact that water level is too low. Uh, you have your suction side uh, skimmer on. Uh, all skimmers are suction side. So when your water level is too low inside of the swimming pool, uh, for the water to enter inside of the skimmer, you're, the skimmer is actually gonna uh, grab air and pull that air down through the system causing the pool pump to completely pri uh, lose its prime and then also it's going to lose the water and it's going to try to because the motor is still being energized by the power source is still on so as it loses its prime it's going to try to pick up that prime again because the pump is on and then it will pick up some water and it will start to pump again but then it's quickly going to lose its prime again because the water level is too low so water level in your pool is very key for um, the pool pump overheating number two like we said like our, we have in, our, in this swimming pool your vacuum cleaners ensuring that your vacuum cleaners are uh, are set to the proper suction so that they're not climbing out of the pool and grabbing air and causing uh, also air to enter the system uh, thus causing the pool pump to lose its prime so water level and any issues that you have with your pool pump uh, I mean with your pool is very key also let's bring it to the system you want to make sure that you none of your valves uh, themselves are drawing in any air that you don't have any cracked uh, strainer lids or any issues with the gaskets or seals or anything like that that's actually causing air to enter the system that's going to make the pool pump lose its prime and overworking itself to try to regain the prime and then it loses the prime and then it regains the prime again that's going to make the pump pool pump work harder and then therefore it's going to overheat uh, number two factor in uh, pool pump overheating is incorrect voltage or uh, the not proper voltage being uh, sent to the pool pump motor. How can this possibly happen? Sometimes you can have degrading of your actual circuit breaker over time. 
uh, the circuit breakers, they're, they're electronic components. Uh, electricity conducts a lot of heat and there's things that can actually fail. Sometimes you can have a surge in your house that can actually cause issues with your, with your circuitry or within the actual wiring itself. And you can have degrading a voltage either across the actual piece of electronic component or wiring or all of the above. So checking to make sure that you are getting your proper voltage going to the motor uh, and knowing what the proper electricity voltage your motor is set up for whether it's on a 120 volt circuit or 240 volt circuit, you wanna make sure that you are testing and making sure that you got the, if you're on a 240 volt circuit, you got 240s coming in on your line and your timer, you got 240 volts coming uh, out of your timer, and then you got 240 volts coming in to your pool pump, and that's all within a reason of, like let's say, uh, three to five percent of 240. Sometimes you could have 240, 243, sometimes you have 244, sometimes you have 241, um, but somewhere around that range of plus or minus percentage of voltage coming in. Now, if you're on a 240 volt circuit and you're reading something like, um, I don't know, let's say 200 and one or you're having 178, something crazy, uh, some crazy number like that, then you know that you'd either have an electrical component or you're having a wiring issue and then your motor's probably cycling on and cycling off and switching on and switching off. Uh, and that's also going to be uh, having your motor uh, overworking itself because it's not receiving the proper voltage. Okay, so those are a few main factors of why pool pumps and motors start to overheat other times too other things is are they exposed within the yard are they heavily getting rained on you know these motors they do operate at a higher temperature when they're on and it is pretty typical that when they are on uh, you know you're not going to be able to touch it while they're on because it does produce heat what keeps the motors relatively cool within a reasonable amount of uh, degree temperature is when the pool pump is primed and water is cooling that pump thus cooling the motor and keeping it at optimal levels just like a car you have thermostats in your car you have you know your radiator system and you have the cooling that's cooling down the motor and the motor operates at a certain temperature and uh, same thing goes for your pool pump motors so water is very very key voltage is very very key um, and then two if you're able to get a cover for your motor to help protect it from the elements of the rain or if you're in other areas like snow I don't know I, I'm, we're from Florida so I don't really know too much about you know the, those northerner uh, or, or the western um, areas where they're doing pool services at you know protecting your equipment is is also key too um, and then also to plumbing uh, circulation uh, the way that the pool is plumbed making sure that it is within proper codes of the plumbing uh, the plumbing uh, regulations um, now let's go into capacitors now capacitors I want you to think of a capacitor uh, two ways They're, they basically have two well, one main job but then it also does another and it also, it also has another job the main job of a capacitor it's called a run capacitor basically what the capacitor does is when the motor or the timer is triggered on, the capacitor is like a jump start or a cranking system for the motor to turn on whenever the electricity is passed through and the, 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 the relays are contact or, or connected together and the unit is actually on. The capacitor sends uh, a, a surge of voltage through the motor kicking it on and then once it kicks it on the capacitor's use is really no no further being utilized at that moment because the regular the the windings and all the other electronic components of the motor is keeping that motor on the capacitor main use is for the initial crank of the motor the second use of the motor is it's like a storage bank of uh, energy as you can see in our video the capacitor itself has a storage of 440 volts AC okay and then it has a microfarads of 30 microfarads and then there's a plus or minus range of how much that capacitor capacitant 
is going to work at. Uh, plus or minus that 6%, that capacitor, if you were to test it in, let's say you're getting 30.3, or let's say you're getting 20, let's say 26 uh, or 20, 28% or 28 microfarads, that capacitor is still within its, its rifle range. Now, there's always going to be degrading of electro, uh, electrical components and specifically when you have pump issues, uh, priming issues, pump issues, overheating issues, that's going to severely degrade all electrical components and that's potentially what could have happened with this capacitor thus damaging the whole entire motor is all this overheating is severely going to degrade all the electrical components and everything's going to basically go down the tubes and then now you're looking into uh, a motor swap or uh, more severely replacing out your pool pump in its entirety so that's just a little bit on what potentially happened with this swimming pool now it may be a little bit different from you uh, thus our pro tip of you know, like i said it before i've had much success in the past on spinning that and then uh, I did check at those times the microfarads of the capacitors and they were still within the ranges, but on the very lower end of the range, they were probably less than, you know, right around that negative 6%. So just by kickstarting and allowing that motor to run, uh, it's going to boost up the, the, the energy in there and possibly allow it to still work. Now, this is just to, you know, get you going again and it's possible that you may still have to replace your capacitor sometime down the road because there was some degrading or some uh, uh, lack thereof inside of the motor or some issues that happen within the motor but nevertheless our pro tip does work so you may be asking yourself potentially this question if i or if you should replace your capacitor for the pool pump motor and i'm gonna give you my honest answer i don't think it's worth replacing only the capacitor for the motor. Uh, you may be saying, no, oh, just try it out and see if it's gonna work. Well, uh, what I feel in my, uh, in my opinion regarding that is that, yes, if you replace your capacitor, you will, the motor will turn on because you have a good working part and the part is gonna be doing its job of cranking on the motor when uh, the motor is energized by the power supply uh, through the timer. Um, so, yes, but the issue with this and the reason why I would not try to um, waste the energy and the money and the part and the client uh, going through this is because of the fact that this motor, this specific motor is going through that issue where it is uh, overheating. Now, we've already gone through the reasons why motors overheat and the potential severe uh, damage they can do to the motor and I am looking for when I do a repair number one what is going to be the best concrete permanent solution and uh, for the customer and for the overall repair because I want the least amount of callbacks as possible uh, uh, closest to zero percent as possible is what I'm looking for so if I feel that uh, one repair that is going to be cheaper for the client is there, then I'm going to offer that to them. Then I, then I feel there's going to be a repair given the situations and all different factors that's, uh, that, that's going on. So, no, I would not replace the capacitor in this situation uh, because it's not going to be a lasting uh, permanent solution uh, to resolve the problem. Now, um, some of you may be saying that you know, his own pro tip didn't work for him. Why should I listen to him? You know, that's fine and dandy. Uh, you know, this channel is predominantly here to share pro tips and tricks to get you uh, through um, and uh, to help you along within this uh, industry and trade of pool services and repairs. Now, uh, always disclaimer, take it above that it's not always gonna work and every specific situation because what scenario you're dealing with with your pool pump or work, whatever aspect around the uh, pool equipment or pool itself 
is dealing with may not specifically be your solution. You may need a little bit less, you may need more of a repair to get you along and, and, and give you that permanent fix that everyone is looking for. So my pro tips may not work for you. I know that they work for me and uh, they've worked in the scenarios that I've had it. Now, we are a channel that we try to show transparency and give you the real, not only the fluff, because I could have uh, ended the video, edited it out and submitted it and just given just only the good side of it. But I, because we're doing this, uh, this, this series on motors and capacitors because it's something that just happened today and you know a lot of our videos get shot on the fly there's very minimal editing um i don't deal with most of a lot of stuff i just i shoot it that's content for the day and i upload it um you know i'm not here we're gonna we give we are a real channel dealing with real life scenario problems out in the field on an everyday cases and these are things that real people go through you know, they try one thing and it didn't work or work for a little bit of time and it didn't work again. That's what we try to give out to you. And, um, you know, again, disclaimer, this may or not may not work for you, but nevertheless, it doesn't hurt to try. And for the pool professionals who are watching our channel and, uh, you know, go ahead and try because what if it does work for you? How would you look in the eyes of your client? You're gonna look like a hero. You saved them potentially $450 on a motor replacement, and all you did was you spun the shaft of the motor. And the, sometimes, depending on the the how much the capacitor got degraded, given that you didn't have all these other factors that, 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 that came into play, like overheating of a motor that damaged other components of inside of the motor, this may have worked for you. I know it's worked for me. You would look like a hero. And that's gonna make you look above the rest of anybody else that they've dealt with in the past. And that's going to give you a lasting impression on your customer and also too in the industry. And that's what our company is about. And that's what this channel is about to help you, to help the homeowner, the pool professional, the pool technician that's out there. And for anybody who potentially is going to be writing uh, negative comments or putting out, uh, you know, negative disclaimers or, or saying negative things about us, that's fine and dandy. Uh, that's your opinion. These are our opinions and these are the things that we go through. The only thing I say about that is that if you're going to if you're going to say negative things about me, why don't you go ahead and you make a video on the same exact topic and show me exactly what you did. Tag me in the comments. That's fine. I want to watch your video. If there's something that I missed or something that you've dealt with in the in, in, in the past that's helped you out, put it down below. Let me read it. And it, the next time I come across that uh, and I remember what you told me that you accomplished and how you were able to get out of it, I'll put it to use. And if it works, I'll come back and I'll tag you on and say, look, yes, that did work. Thank you so much because that's just going to be another tool in my shed that's going to help me along the way. And that's all that I'm trying to provide uh, to you, the viewer, and to uh, the any uh, pool owner that's out there. These are things that you can try to help you along the way that may potentially get you out of a bind. That's merely what it is. For all the other, for the people who, again, are the negative Nancys, the naysayers, the haters, the keyboard warriors. Do something, make a video. I don't see nobody else, the people that make negative comments. I'll, I reply to all comments, good and bad. I welcome all comments, positive and negative. I'll see you, all the comments that come in and I reply to all of them. And I thank you. I thank all my haters for being here, for showing support on the channel. And I just ask, you know, listen, if you don't like it, you're more than welcome to change the channel. You can go to any of those other fluff channels out there or any of the channels that are not giving you the real, real, putting down step by step on how to do things. They just show little snippets here and little snippets there. Any, anything that worked out for them, but they never show if they actually made failures, if they actually made a mistake if they actually says something wrong and i'll say something wrong every time again here and there i'm a human and so are all of us that are watching this video so um if you have something to say 
say it in the comments. I'll reply to you. For all the people who are positive on this channel, uh, I just want to tell all of you, this is a positive channel. We give out positive things, positive content, real stuff that actually really happens in the field that it, real people are going to come across with, real pool owners, real pool technicians that deal with troubles and uh, tr having to troubleshoot things and trying. These are my pro tips are things that I've come across that came into my mind that I've used and it actually worked. Do they work all the time? No, they don't. They don't work all the time. They're not going to work in every single scenario like this one did. This one didn't work out for us in this scenario. We tried to help out the client, but as long as the client sees that you're trying and you're there for them and you're keeping their pool equipment and, 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 and them in mind and trying to help them save a buck here and there, uh, and if you're able to do that, you look like a hero. And if not, they'll tell you, send me an estimate for the repair because ultimately the customer wants a permanent solution. Nobody wants a band-aid where later on it's not working right and then they're gonna have to shell out some money again. Nobody wants that. And that's basically what this pro tip is. That's what this video is all about is things that you can try and ultimately if it doesn't work out this is the solution for it so to everybody thank you so much for watching this video thank you for hearing me out um if you have a comment post it down below like and subscribe to my page uh for all the haters are out there keep on hating i love it i love you i love all the people that are that are watching this channel helping us grow i'm gonna keep making content the way that i do and if you like it, amazing. If you don't, that's fine too. So I'm gonna leave you one, one last one lasting thing. Keep it positive, keep on moving forward. Like and subscribe to my page, help us reach our goal, and I'm gonna help you keep on fixing those pools. Till the next time in the next pool, in the next problem, in the next troubleshooting, in the next pro tip, I'll see you then. See you in the comments.